Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the month of April, highlighting some of the key events for the month and giving us a rough overview of what we can expect and how we can best use the energy. Now before I go through the actual key dates, I just want to clarify as I always do that astrology doesn't control us in any way, shape or form. It's a set of influences that we all respond to in various ways. The more unconscious we are, the more likely we are to manifest the negative side of things, but we all have the free will to manifest things our own way, but if we know what the astrology was doing, we can choose our actions more carefully and ensure that what we're doing goes with the natural flow of the energy rather than trying to force things to happen our way. But as I said, it doesn't control us, it just has an influence over the collective unconscious. But if we're aware of what's going on, we can choose to respond to things rather than react. And therefore we maintain a sense of centeredness and control. Now in terms of the key dates for April, all but one of them are in the second half of the month. So we have on the 15th of April, Mercury will be turning direct again, having been retrograde since the 23rd of March and spent entire time retrograde in Aries. On the 16th, we have a new moon in Aries. On the 17th, we have two key events. One, Chiron will be t um, changing sign for the first time in seven years, so we'll be moving in out of Pisces and into Aries. And on the same day, we'll have um, the first Saturn retrograde within the sign of Capricorn. On the 20th, the Sun will move into Taurus, so obviously that will change the theme that we're working on for a particular month. And I'll go into more detail of that later, and there will be a separate video on that. This, on the 21st, Pluto turns retrograde in Capricorn. Um, so that will be for about um, five months transit. And then lastly, on the 30th, we have a full moon in Scorpio. So, if I now I'll go through the different events and outline what they mean for us. So, the first one, Mercury turning direct, this brings an end to an, an introspective period, a period where we've, we need to be reevaluating things and assessing if we're taking the right kind of action and making sure that our actions and desires are aligned with the goals we set for ourselves and we're not trying to do things which will undermine us and it's also a time of if we recognize who we are so the first half of April is effectively governed largely by the Mercury retrograde so it's important that we use this time to reflect to take things um, slowly so we don't go rushing into new ideas or go about things haphazardly we take time to slow down and carefully evaluate the goals we set for ourselves and make sure that they are aligned with who we are. We're not trying to be something that we're not and we're not trying to go against our own fundamental nature. And it's also looking at the way that we take action and making sure that the actions are actually wise. We're not just going to create more trouble than it's worth further, further down the line and what we're doing isn't going to adversely impact other people because if it does then that's obviously going to gener generate karma for ourselves which we don't want. So Mercury Direct brings the end of the introspective period and the time to start implementing the insights and having a deeper grasp of who we are so that we have a more clear insight as to how well the goals we set for ourselves match up with who we are. The next event I mentioned was a new moon in Aries. So this is the first new moon of the astrological cycle um, since it began on the 20th of March. So this is our first opportunity to set new intentions in the current astrological cycle. And with Aries we're dealing with things like um, taking action, so having the courage to break through fears and insecurities in order to take the actions necessary to start goals off. It's learning to develop healthy um, assertiveness, so we don't try to force our own way um, with other people, we don't try to force people to our own way of seeing things, but conversely we're also not a doormat, so we don't just sit back and allow other people to walk all over us. It's that fine balance between 
making it clear that we have our own needs and we're not going to accept people just walking over us and ignoring our own personal needs or ignoring who we are but equally we need to make sure that we don't do treat other people that way either so we assert our own needs with respect that other people also have their own needs well we may also need to look at where do we engage in self-absorption where do we become so focused on the self or so self-oriented that we forget to acknowledge the people around us we forget to respect their own uniqueness or their, their own sense of identity and therefore it causes unnecessary conflict and stress so it's a time for setting new beginnings of to recognize or identify opportunities for growth identify what actions we need to take identify what fears we need to overcome so i don't mean process the fear first and then take action Aries is more about taking action in spite of fear. Fear is a natural emotion that often comes up when we start trying to do anything new because it's doing something which we haven't tried before and it's unknown, we're not sure what the outcome is. But Aries gives us that courage to take that action regardless. And as long as we're not um, trying to engage in bravado or trying to do things to look stronger than we are, having that courage to take new actions without really knowing the outcome is a key element of Aries. Now the day after the new moon Chiron will be entering Aries. Now this isn't a complete end to the time of Chiron in Pisces. Chiron will retrograde later in the year and move back into Pisces for one final stint but then once it moves back into Aries again next year that will be the last time we experience Chiron in Pisces um, for about 44 years or so, in fact probably even 42. So it's Chiron in, um, Pi, Chiron in Aries is looking at the wounds to the I am. So one thing we'll need to be mindful of is what words do we use after the word I am, because I am is an identity statement. And with Chiron, it deals with the wound to that sense of identity where we may struggle to figure out who we are, we may may not have a clear idea of who we are, we may not have had our um, sense of self-identity validated by anyone in our formative years, so Chiron brings to awareness the wound um, to this core um, sense, or that wound to that initial spark, so understanding that we may, we may go through a period where we struggle to figure out who we are um, to begin with, if we haven't been doing the work already because the thing is we don't have to wait for um, a planet to go through a specific sign before we learn something we we can learn new things at any point in time we're not bound by the cycle of the planets for any given lesson the planets do highlight key lessons that we need to be learning so they highlight the spiritual lessons of our time we can't predict how they will manifest externally, we can't really say how it's going to manifest in each individual's life because we're all wired differently, we'll all interact with it in different ways depending on um, our experiences growing up and what we're doing with our lives now and our understanding of ourselves. but we can at least learn to become conscious of who we are, of digging deeper, I mean we've had Uranus going through Aries um, for the past seven years itself and this has been part of trying to awaken the I am with Chiron following in his wake we need to look at any wounds to the I am as well so Uranus has been digging deep and helping us to see the deeper levels of our self-awareness and self-identity but Chiron's transit through areas which lasts about eight years we're highlighting the wounds of it and where and showing us the net result of what happens if we're not careful about what we say after the words I am because I am is an affirmative statement you think about any affirmations they begin with things like I am or I will so when the current is in Aries we need to be mindful of what words we use after that because that will then define our sense of who we are so if we choose positive and empowering things then those affirmations will empower us and what we how we describe ourselves will empower us and make us stronger but likewise if we use words which are painful or about emotional states after the words I am then we'll define ourselves as those emotions and we'll just cause more of what we don't want. 
Now, in terms of other, the, the day, the same day, Saturn will be turning retrograde in Capricorn. Now, Saturn is at, his, at home in Capricorn, but this is a time where we need to go inwards. We need to look at developing, because Saturn is the guardian of potential. For us to keep growing, we have to overcome the challenges that Saturn throws us. And with Saturn in Capricorn, we're looking at our integrity, our actions, or is what we say matched with actions? Do we have that foundation of self-discipline and patience in order to keep pursuing a goal, even when we're faced with obstacles? So Saturn here is really gonna test us on that discipline. So if we're trying to do something and we, it's not done with integrity, it's not done with that discipline and patience, then Saturn retrograde often makes that thing, the area a lot harder. And Saturn, Saturn retrograde almost feels like having wings being stripped off us. But if we do the work of the retrograde itself, then we grow the wings that we get at the end, like the butterfly pushing out of the chrysalis, are much stronger and better suited for who we are now. But we have to do the work of developing self-discipline, of developing patience, of perseverance, and developing self-control. So we don't, it's about self-mastery in effect, and making sure that we di whatever doesn't serve who we are, whatever crutches we've been relying on, we learn to live without those crutches. So Saturn often serves to strip away the crutches, the convenient things that we lean upon in order to keep going when those creatures don't actually serve us, we're actually stronger than we realise and Saturn tests us by stripping away the creatures and saying, okay, so now that that prop you've been relying on isn't taken away, can you still keep going? Can you still keep believing in the goal you've set? Or have you been relying on this and you don't actually have the self-belief and the faith to keep going? So Saturn is the tester of faith and as in true faith, and I don't necessarily mean faith in terms of religious sense here, I also mean things like self-belief, because more often than not, we prop up our faith with things that we think we need, and Saturn strips away those props from us, asks us to prove to ourselves that we can keep going, that we have that internal resilience, that internal fortitude to keep going in the face of struggle and become strong individuals and develop stronger integrity so that what people see within us is a reflection of who we are. So whatever is fake, Saturn retrograde will help to unearth it and ask us to strip it away. I'll go into more detail on this later in the month when I'll do a dedicated video on it. It's worth going to give an overview now. The next event is on the 20th. This is when the Sun moves out of Aries and into Taurus. So with the sun in Aries for the first half, first two thirds of the month, this is a time where we're looking at taking action and initiating new beginnings, so planting the seeds of the goals that we want to set, and taking the steps necessary to make sure those seeds can germinate. But when the sun moves into Taurus, this is a time that tests our motivation, because when everything is new and novel, we often find motivation comes naturally. When the sun moves into Taurus, however, things tend to slow down, and this. This period is a necessary test to see how committed we are to our goals. Is there anything that needs to keep growing, for example here at the allotment, it's all well and good if we plant the seeds for crops, but if we don't, then don't do the next step of continuing to water them as and when need be, making sure that the right the soil is maintained, that the weeds are removed and um, we keep doing steady actions day by day to keep things going, if we don't develop this steadiness, this patience, then the goals that we initiated won't progress any further. So it's important with the Sun in Taurus that we remember to slow down. We also enjoy the fruits of our labor. We take time to engage in the physical senses. We learn to enjoy the simple things. We don't, we learn not to possess things either. We learn to appreciate and understand the natural cycles of life, the organic cycles of growth, and we become more in tune with how things naturally unfold, and by doing this, we can 
remove a lot of the stress of trying to force things to happen against the natural timing. The more we work with the cycles of nature, the less stressful things are because we're not trying to force things to happen and causing unnecessary stress for ourselves. We learn to appreciate natural things, learn to appreciate the simple things in life. Yeah, and as, it's, as before, I'll go into more detail in another video. The, the next thing, on the following day, Pluto turns retrograde in Capricorn. So with Pluto retrograde, this is a time where we have to go into our shadow side self to delve deeper than we've gone before and to bring up the hidden resources in the depths of our psyche that are often hidden in the shadows and which we haven't noticed so far. But it's only through doing the shadow work of Pluto that we can realise the true depths of our um, strength, the true depths of our resourcefulness. And with Pluto and Capricorn, this is also testing us on how we exercise power and do we exercise it with integrity or do we allow fear to take over? Do we are we trying to pursue something that isn't aligned with who we are? And knowing full well that or feeling that sense that what we're doing isn't right for ourselves, but we still need to keep we feel that compulsion to keep going. The polarity point of Pluto at the moment is Cancer. So with Pluto going through Capricorn, this also has a knock-on effect with Cancer and asks us to develop the Cancerian nature, to develop that internal landscape, to develop our feelings, our emotions, and to connect with our internal sides. So, because for Capricorn to manifest at its highest, we need to know who we are. And Pluto going through Capricorn has been highlighting where things don't have integrity, at the collective level, we've seen all kinds of scandals and corruption issues come to the surface where things are not, have not been ha done with integrity or not been done with honesty, and now we're seeing the net result of it. Within our own personal lives, we need to look at where do we, where have we been pursuing goals or dreams that are actually someone else's in order to try and build a legacy. We need to know, figure out what legacy is actually right for who we are. And this doesn't necessarily mean that we just look at ourselves, we need to look at the wider picture because Capricorn also deals with society as a whole. And it's important that we look at where are things out of alignment, where are things not aligned with the universal laws, the divine laws that govern everything, and where do we operate outside of these, where do we try to do it? Because the thing is, when we strive to live in accordance with spiritual laws, events unfold naturally, we end up going with a flow that helps us, that guides us. But Pluto going through Capricorn is showing us all the things within our shadow side that knocks us out of this flow, that push, gets us out of that flow of abundance through engaging in things which aren't honest, which are driven by fear and the need to control rather than the willingness to surrender and let go. Pluto is the natural rule of Scorpio and this is also with Pluto. So during this, we're going through like a phoenix phase at a societal level. At school, in Scorpio, it's about the death of the um, ego self in order to evolve or to transform into a collective sense of identity. So recognizing how we're part of a whole, and with Capricorn. It's going through a rebirth of structures in our lives, re a rebirth of um, qualities that bring about discipline and order, but looking to make sure it's aligned with the divine order rather than trying to establish human order, which is often in conflict with nature, in conflict with the natural laws, and generates more and more stress and requires more and more energy to keep it going because it's a structure that's trying to fight against the natural way of doing things. So Pluto retrograde is a time for us to evaluate where do we try and fight the flow of things, where do we try to make things happen our way without recognising the impact it's having on the environment around us or without recognising how it's going against natural law. So as I said I'll do another video on this later on that goes into more depth. The last thing I want to mention is the 
full moon in Scorpio on the 30th of April. Because this is obviously balancing out the sun in Taurus, which is about the physical side of things. The so like physical senses like touch and remembering to enjoy the simple um, physical pleasures of life and Scorpio which is the deeper self, the unconscious side, the, the side that transforms things and it's about bringing the two into balance with one another. So Scorpio reminds us to dig deeper than just the surface level of reality to plunge down to the core of something to understand its key essence whilst Taurus reminds us to remember to enjoy the physical things in life as well to not get so het up with um, transforming everything or the heavy stuff that is often painful to deal with Taurus reminds us to remember to enjoy the um, physical things in life but with it being the sun here we also need to remember that we can also if we're not careful end up engaging in pos possessive behaviours or engage in materialistic desires rather than desire to enjoy things and to embrace and nurture ourselves and to because Taurus is also about our personal resources it's about digging deep and developing our own personal resources and the greatest resource we will we'll have is ourselves we think of resources as material things but not necessarily without wisdom or without that those internal resources we wouldn't know how to utilize our physical resources but Scorpio also reminds us that we share the world with a lot of other people so we can't just keep trying to meet our own material needs at the expense of other people Scorpio reminds us of the power of sharing of remembering to bring our resources together and, and bring our energies together in a mutually empowering way so that those resources multiply in effect they become more effective because they can be used for more things and greater projects can be created through sharing what we have rather than hoarding it so Scorpio brings us that reminder to balance things to make sure that we also recognize the need to honor one another of sharing the resources and the power or the mutual empowerment that emerges through releasing the need to control things and allowing the divine wisdom to show us what to be doing and what's the best way to pursue the goals we set. So I hope that's a useful guide for the month of April. There's a lot to take on board but I hope it's a month of much growth, of many blessings and the stabilisation of whatever goals we've set for ourselves. So take care and be blessed.